Hey guys, I got a really unusual project project that came into the shop. I actually had three donations, very old chairs, and they were donated to me with this type with this knowledge that they they've been in the uh, United States since 1850 in a local family. They have no more use for them. They were really kept in good shape. Um, they haven't been upholstered probably since the 50s. But they, they were told, they told me that they came over from France in 1850, which uh, automatically you would think, okay, so they're French chairs. But I don't think they're French chairs because up here I have what you would consider, they were called King Louis uh, the 16th chair, they told me, these three. Um, I just, uh, I don't know about that. I, I haven't seen too many uh, dark wood King Louis the 16th chairs. If you guys can help me out, that would be great. But. Um, this is what I think of. This is a very. This is a French chair. This, this is a set of eight that came in. It's not a donated piece. This is a customer's. But this, just to show you that this is about the same age. This is French. I believe these are English. Just because they came from France doesn't mean they couldn't have been English chairs in France. That's what I'm thinking. So what I what I want to do, I want to show you the scale. I mean, these are small chairs, uh, scaled small, but they're for a dining room. See how small they are? These are a little bit bigger. These are very ornate. The backs are very ornate. Usually King Louis XVI chairs I find a little bit more streamlined and not as ornate. These are very ornate. So let's put this one down. So what I want to show you today is how to deconstruct. I'm going to have to really do a restoration on these. And if you've seen my other videos, you know that I try to um, save as much of the original as possible. I'm not sure what's going on with these, but let, let's do a little investigation. Let's put these two chairs. Let's do this. Start with the tufted, one of the tufted back ones. Okay. Now I know I'm going to have to take that back off. Now listen, what I tell people really, um, try not to deconstruct. Uh, deconstruct only what you have to. For instance, these arms here. These arms are the hottest part on these, even hotter than the tufted backs. The arms. They're very dainty, and I can feel that they're original horsehair arm, and they're really in good shape. So I'm going to carefully peel the fabric off of that. But that's so that's not going to be an issue. Positively, um, I could do a little cotton, new new cotton in there, and that's about it. It's the seat and the back that's going to be the issue. The back's going to come off anyhow because I'll show you. The inside back is recessed, which also is an indication of the age. When you see this, that usually this is an older older treatment. Um, the other thing that tells me about the age, I haven't identified the country of origin yet, hopefully when I take this apart I'll see something, is the wooden casters. So already, you know, it's definitely 1850 and before, we know that from what our customer said, but I bet, uh, I'm thinking like more like 1820 uh, English, English Victorian right now. So I did find a label which is cool, this is a local upholsterer. I'm not, uh, I think he's retired or not working anymore. And he, I think he was around in the 50s, 1950s, not 1850s. So this was upholstered, I would say, not only was it upholstered, I think it was restored in, in, in 1950, I'm guessing. Okay, because one of the indications, so we do a little detective work, you guys, right? So when I turn this up, look what I find. I find a clinch it. Let me just take the cameras off to show you. I find two layers of, of webbing. Sorry. Three layers of webbing. That's kind of interesting. So webbing, uh, the webbing that we use, you can go 50 to 80 years on the webbing. So if there are three webbings on this, you're talking 150 years. So that, that makes sense, doesn't it, you guys? So that's about right there at 1820, I think. Um, so we're getting there. My hope is that on the inside of this chair, after I take it apart a little bit, I'll be able to see a sign, uh, a date, of, and, a, and a signature of some sort in there. That would be really unusual, but let's hope. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do in, it, in, in trying to identify that is I'm going to just carefully take this fabric off. I just want to see. Ooh, we, we got some writing on the muslin. The tradition in upholstery was um, writing on the muslin and we do have some writing here this is kind of cool and the only writing we have are measurements so we have 20 by 30 and 20 by 17 which happens to be the seat and the inside back or the 
the outside outside back measurements. So that's really interesting. So so far we found more than what I would anticipate. So now what I'm going to try to do, I'm using my hands to do this because fortunately it's been all tacked. I'm trying to take this off with as much sensitivity as I can. I don't want to take my mallet and start hammering. Okay guys, I'm trying to get what's not good for me, I can't reuse. Um, it's a historical thing, I'll, I'll try to save the muslin with the historical information on it, but what I what I don't need is the cotton and the old fabric because um, the fabric's from the 50s. It's not really going to do anybody any good. This, this is the way I do it. Okay, I'm really encouraged with what I see so far. The restoration that Mr. Johnson did was impeccable. I can tell you that right now. I'm going to save this. Put this down here. Okay. So we have a really good edge roll, a really beautiful layer of horsehair in here. Um, and now I'm going to carefully just peel this off. It actually is coming off pretty fairly easy, which it does because the, the tacks go through the burlap. I'm going to try to save this. I'm going to restore this. I'm going to restore this whole piece. I'm not needing that. Try to take this off in a nice layer. I'm going to clip this threading in here. I'm going to save this as much as I can. I'm going to put this down. What do I have here? All this is just filler, which is no good for me. Just to give you an idea, the burlap I'm going to bring this up for you to see. Burlap has done its job. It's, it's at the last of its life. But, uh, you know, this is probably the burlap that's in here. I would say, I would say the burlap is old. I would say the burlap is probably uh, from the second time this was upholstered, which would probably make it about 100 years old. So it was, it was repaired more or less. The restoration was like more like a repair and they kept this and, and they, they did work around the outer edges. This is going to have to be fixed. I'm going to just show you guys. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to have to retie these springs. It's going to be a complete job. These are hand tied down. They actually tie the burlap down which is interesting. You know, I can tell you guys, you don't have to do that. Um, there's these twines that are in here, if it's eight-way tied, which they aren't, um, eight-way tie usually is good, and then you just put, you just cover over. The reason why you have the stitching, the other reason is, is so that they can insert the lower portion of the horse hair inside there to stabilize it. So for that reason, it's probably not a bad idea. But uh, not a good idea. You don't have to do it if you're trying to do it to attach it to the springs. It's not necessary. All right. So if you're not using horse hair, that is. Okay, so that's done. That's a res restoration. I don't see any any uh, identification in there. So now I'm going to try to carefully. This back piece is broken, so I need to send it out to the woodworker. So this has got to come off trying to get it off in one piece. And I'm hoping that there's some type of identification inside here. There's a lot of tack work going on. You guys can't see it. But there's a lot of tacks because I'm feeling them with my finger. Oh wow, get that off. It's good to have calluses, you guys. Otherwise, I'd be bleeding all over the place because this is going, these tacks are going right in my fingers, but I'm trying to be careful. I don't want to pull and bring that wood with me. I'm trying not to. So that came off one piece. So what I'm going to do, before it leaves, before it leaves, right? Make sure you mark top, top, okay? And we'll say number one because we do have three chairs, number one. And we'll put a, a number one over here just to identify it with that piece. And then we take this off. This is beautifully done. I could tell you that this 
this is beautiful. This is done separately and it's put on over the outside back. I'll show you that in a minute. That is well done. That's a nice deep tufting and it's done with horse hair. So that's nice. So let's take, let's just peel some of the cotton away to see. Sometimes an upholsterer will sign his name in this area, believe it or not, or chalk his name in this area or, or the date, but I don't see anything there. That's too bad. Um, so the outside back is put on first, like I showed you. See? Let's just take that off. piece of wood just fell out as careful as I'm being. So you want to save as much for the woodworker of that wood as you possibly can. So that just means, whoa! <laughs> I didn't expect that, but I probably should have because if you can see, there's nails holding it on here. From, actually, it's good that this is off because we can see the nice little dowel that they have in here. So I'm just going to put that back. We have two pieces of wood that need to go back in. So what I do with the pieces of wood, you guys, if I don't lose it, I'll tape it. I'll tape it to the arm is a good place to do it. Because we have three of them, right? So we don't lose it. Let's just turn this around. Now, I think I did a pretty good, um, pretty good investigative work about how old this is, um, and a, a lot of the, a lot of the answers came from the upholstery itself. So, I think that this is 1820, and I think it's um, Victorian, English Victorian, that just happened to be in France and came over from France to the family, um, and they probably in their tradition. Uh, always thought of it as King Louis the 16th. Um, if anybody out there says otherwise, please let me know in the comments section, but it, it, just, uh, it just makes sense to me with what we did. So I hope you learned something, um, and I will see you next time.